am going to get up out of my chair to control myself, and I'm going to go in there 20, 30 minutes, and I'm going to listen to David Ike today give our listeners and viewers a speech. Not an interview, but a speech. You, in fact, you got 30 minutes, David, and I'm going to come back and do another 20 minutes with you uh, on the other side. God bless you. David Ike, ladies and gentlemen, on how we're winning and how we're going to win and how the false reality is being lifted, the curtain is being lifted, and we are going to win. Resistance is victory. David Ike. Well, thanks, Alex. Uh, first of all, I would say that there has to be a fundamental change in the dynamics and the understanding of where the power lies. We keep talking about the fact that uh, the, the, the structure of society is built in, on pyramids and pyramidal power, um, with the few at the top dictating to the, the rest of the pyramid. But what tends to happen is we look at the top of the pyramid for the power in the pyramid, but that ain't where the power is. The real power in the pyramid is at the base. That's what's holding the capstone, the uh, apparent point of power, where it is. And what they've done is done a massive mind game upon the human uh, consciousness and persuade us that they have the power, that the dark suits and the, uh, the famous people and the people with letters after their name and, 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 and names before their name, president, prime ministers, head of the World Bank, that uh, this is where um, the, the power is. They have the power, but they don't. What this whole uh, game is about is getting the mass of the people persuaded that that's where the power lies. And so we, we look at them in awe, we, we think they, they're all powerful, there's nothing we can do because we're just Joe Public and we have no power. So we are giving our power away by the perception that we don't have it, but they do. It's all a mind game. And then you look at the, the, uh, the, the pyramid uh, structure and you have the mass of the pyramid at the bottom, i.e. the mass of humanity, holding the elite up there. What are we doing? And I um, had a friend years ago, he was um, a, a, a British comedian, his name was Larry Grayson, and, and he died and I went to his um, memorial service at Covent Garden in London, and another comedian told a story that Larry Grayson had told him about something that happened to him, and I listened to it and I thought, that is so profound. Larry Grayson told, told him this story, that he was um, in, a, in a show in the, in the 1950s or something on the old musical circuit in Britain, and it was an all-male show, and there was one woman in it, and that was Larry Grayson dressed up as Britannia on, in the last scene. The last scene of this show, uh, all the sailors, uh, all the men came on dressed as sailors, and they formed a pyramid on the stage. And they were singing Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves, all that pretty nonsense. Anyway, uh, then Larry Grayson would come on dressed as Britannia with the, the helmet and the sword and the shield. And he would get manhandled up the top of this pyramid for the big finish at the end of the show with him at the capstone of the pyramid. And on this particular night, he said, um, things have been going rather well. Uh, but then he said he noticed that the sailor in the left-hand uh, corner of the pyramid had got rather a cough. And this cough got worse and worse and worse. And, and this uh, sailor couldn't hold in the pyramid anymore and, and staggered forward. What then happened was the pyramid collapsed. And Larry Grayson, symbolic of this global elite at the peak of these pyramids, ended up in someone's lap in the second row. And, and so we have to, first of all, re-evaluate and re-understand where the point of power is in this world. There are seven billion people being manipulated. There is a relative handful uh, doing the manipulating in full knowledge of what they are doing. So much so that to impose their will, they have to engage and employ people from the target population called uh, people in uniform and dark suit administrators to enforce and administer into being the, uh, the structure of control uh, that they are uh, pressing forward. So the, the target population even has to supply the enforcers 
and the administrators of this structure on the target population. That's what we're talking about in terms of numbers. So first of all, the people have the power. We have allowed ourselves to be persuaded that we don't, and therefore every day we give our power away to the few, thinking that's where the power lies. So we think that we can't challenge the, uh, uh, the law. Well, you know, you've got to be law-abiding. Well, why have you got to be law-abiding? If laws respect freedom and respect uh, human civil rights, they respect fairness, they respect justice, then fine. But if they are imposed simply to take those things away, to dictate to the fine detail of people's lives, to make the system unjust so the money goes to the tiny few and gets sucked out of the uh, majority population who are working harder and harder, more and more jobs, just to stand still, while, while uh, the, the bankers who have created this current economic mayhem at the top on purpose and, 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 and lower down through sheer bloody greed, um, they are paying themselves massive bonuses based on borrowed money that our children and grandchildren will have to pay back. That's what, what happens when the majority give their power away to the few. Now, when those laws are being introduced that are giving the, 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 the people the rights to do this, that are saying there's one law for the few and there's another law for everyone else, that are taking terrorist uh, laws in, in, in theory and, and applying them to the general population as it was always planned that they would do, then what are we doing obeying those laws? We should not be acquiescing to them. We should be uh, refusing to uh, obey them, refusing to acquiesce to them, because the real power is with us if we come together in numbers, in mutual support, we put aside these fault lines of religious differences, racial differences, income bracket differences, and we realize that actually this is not a, a conspiracy to um, enslave middle class Americans or Jewish people or, or, or Muslims. It, it's a conspiracy to enslave all of us and in, in uh, dividing and ruling us um, they have got us fighting and arguing among ourselves which is the only way that a few can manipulate the many by dividing the many in and on, on themselves so first of all we have to start to see where the dynamics of power is if we take it with the people not the uh, so-called elite cesspit uh, level um, and then once we realize where the dynamic of power is to stop dividing that power by arguing about who has the right religion and who, who has the right politics and all the rest of it it's all a nonsense it's all diversion people should believe whatever religion uh, they want to follow and respect another's right to believe something else okay you believe your religion yeah i believe mine or whatever i don't have a religion but you know any anyone that does okay well let's have a beer or something just and get on with it so let, let's agree to differ let's unite however behind what affects us all and what affects all our children and all our grandchildren no matter what religion what color what creed what income bracket what culture and that is the fact that our basic human rights are being uh, eroded by the day. We're having a draconian, uh, soulless, uh, cold, callous, vindictive uh, force imposing their will upon us while we are divided. And, and when we stop doing that and, and we come together, then we say, okay, we have the numbers, how do we use that? And there's a, there's a, a great example going on at the moment with the foreclosures. I'm reading now that um, it's being claimed that these, the banks have been faking uh, documents to force uh, foreclosures through faster and faster because they can't cope with the numbers. Well, if that is correct, that's not coping with the number of foreclosures when people are actually leaving when they get a foreclosure document and they can't handle that, so they're saying. Imagine if we took this one stage further 
and said, we are not leaving for closure document or not. They could not possibly cope with that number of people sitting tight and staying put. Where would they start? They don't have the numbers. Because here we have a situation again where we come back to a law that is fair and just and right, fair enough. A law that is there to fleece the population, to impose the will of the few, to literally steal their, their livelihood and their homes. What are we doing obeying those laws? Uh, so um, instead of doing uh, the, 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 the thing that most people do, which is the document comes, or well, it's the law, we can't pay the mortgage, we've got to go. Instead of doing that, sit put, stay put. We're not moving.